Lucy D., a British-Israeli woman who sustained gunshot injuries in an attack suspected to be carried out by suspected Palestinian terrorists on Friday has died days after her daughters were shot dead instantly during the attack. The late British-Israeli woman, Lucy D., 45, had been in a coma since the attack in the occupied West Bank while her daughters, Rina, 15, and Maya, 20, were buried on Sunday in the settlement of Kfar Etzion, with their father and three surviving siblings present. It was gathered that the family moved to Israel nine years ago from the UK, where Lucy's husband, Leo, had served as a rabbi. According to BBC, E.I.N. Kerem Hospital in Jerusalem announced that Lucy, who was also known by her Hebrew name, Leah, D. had died on Monday morning despite great and constant efforts. It would be recalled that Lucy, Rina and Maya were shot as they were driving in the Jordan Valley in the Northern West Bank in Israel on their way to a family holiday. Security sources said their vehicle crashed and the suspected terrorists went up to the car and opened fire on the women at close range. Israeli media reported that 22 bullet casings were found, likely from a Kalashnikov assault rifle. The husband, Rabbi Di had been further ahead in a separate car when his sister called him with news of the attack. Rabbi Di said he tried to call his wife and daughters but they did not answer. He then saw a missed call from Maya from the time of the attack. Medical team confirmed the death of the two sisters at the scene of the attack while military helicopter was used to airlift the mother, Lucy D, to hospital. Also on Friday, an Italian tourist was killed and five people were wounded in a car ramming in Israel. The attack came after the two sisters were killed and their mother, now late, Lucy D was wounded in an attack in the occupied West Bank. Justin Amla, who wrote from Tel Aviv, Israel, April 10, 2023, described the challenges the Jewish people are faced with. Justin Amla's full write-up is presented below in verbatim form. Tonight Lucy D died, just days after her daughters, Maya who was 20 and Rina who was just 15. And they didn't just die, they were murdered by an evil that is so dark and so unfathomable that it would drive the most sane person mad just thinking about it. I'm looking at their pictures right now, as they smile in a moment frozen for eternity looking at the camera with joy and hope and dreams of a future that has been so cruelly ripped away, so viciously shattered, and so ferociously destroyed. This is a tragedy that does not end with their deaths, but will linger forever in a gaping hole that will never be filled, because there is a family that is suffering right now in ways that we cannot ever imagine, and there are friends who are weeping and a community in despair and a sorrow so heavy that hangs over the entire people of Israel. Time heals, they say, but I cannot imagine a wound like this can ever heal, because it leaves a mark of such indelible pain on souls so tormented that every moment of every day will feel like the end of the world. My people are under attack right now and we, who love and care about this country, must offer our unconditional love and comfort and support and thoughts and prayers and whatever else we can, because these are not unknown victims in faraway lands. This is our family suffering right now in our Jewish home, a place that allows every Jew around the world to live in dignity and security knowing it's there. That doesn't mean we are not vulnerable, because we all are, but it does mean that unlike much of our history where the world ignored our suffering, we will not allow them to ignore it again. Much of the media, as usual, has been shocking in their coverage of these events often referring to these attacks as being carried out by Palestinian gunmen, as if it's some kind of old cowboy movie, and they make a point of referring to some of these attacks as taking place in the occupied West Bank, as if somehow wanting to minimize their deaths, belittling our history, making Jews seem like colonizers in the land of which the birth of Jewish history took place, thousands of years before. Every single one of our critics even existed. This is not new, because every day they look for more excuses, saying Jews are storming the Temple Mount, or Israel has the most right-wing religious government ever, trying constantly to justify these atrocities, blaming not the murderous perpetrators, but the innocent victims instead. It angers me, but does not surprise me. The terror Israel faces by the Palestinian terrorists does not care about whether there is a right-wing government or a left-wing government. 
It does not care if you are liberal or conservative, religious or secular, pro-judicial reform or against it. Jews are being attacked today because they are Jews. It's really that simple. Yet, even as I read about the terrible tragedy of Lucy D. and her daughters, I also read another article not about lives taken, but about lives saved. A young Jewish couple were driving on Highway 60 when they crashed into a barricade of rocks set up on the road. It was an ambush set up by Palestinian Arabs, who emerged after the collision throwing rocks at their car. Their intention was murder. But a local Arab, whose home overlooked the site of the accident, saw what was happening and he called the couple to seek refuge in his home, which although they were initially fearful, did so and were able to be kept safe until security forces could escort them back to their home. In that moment, this Arab man, who can only be described as an angel, saved their lives and gave us hope that perhaps in all this terrible darkness with so much evil, good will still always exist. So while it's easy to lose hope and to give in to despair, we cannot allow that, because hope is the lifeblood of our people, that we to always strive and dream of a better future, and to understand that whatever differences we may have between us, we remain one people who share dreams of a future living in peace and harmony for not just us, but for our children and for their children too.